Dr. Sunny here, and this is a lecture on culture, specifically the regulators of human life and identity. So let's get started. All world languages can be traced to Africa, and African languages today are the most different from our other contemporary languages. This is because African languages are older. You can think of Africa not just as the source of all world languages, but also, if you will, the cradle of civilization. Climate change and other pressures led to migration out of Africa. And this migration came in many waves, taking humans from Africa to Asia, from Asia to India and Australia, from the Middle East to Europe, and then to Central Asia and Russia, and finally to the Americas. Social networks in society were developed to regulate life so that we could survive our complex global environment. As centuries passed with our geographic separation, humans developed diverse social networks, regulators for human life. These social network regulators are the basis of our understanding of the world, our beliefs, and our shared individual identities. They have also been the source of conflict and confrontations between these unique groups of people. In 2013, Sir David Canadine put forth six forms of regulators of human life and identity. Let's take a closer look at each of these. The first regulator is religious identity. It is the oldest source of human identity, and it's really one of the best predictors of how we live our lives. This regulator is responsible for most global conflicts historically. The next regulator moving on from religion is national identity. This national identity might be the most significant creation of modern times. Since the 18th century, it has been more important than religion as a regulator shaping our national identity. And it is a leading cause, much like religion, of global conflict due to how different judgments we make of how other people live their lives. Next up, the third regulator we'll discuss in this lesson, class, or as Max Weber defined it, social class, which is determined by wealth, status, and of course, power. Class is your economic position in a specific society, such as upper, lower, or middle class, or the Hindu caste system in India. The fourth regulator is gender identity, and it has been found that it is more significant than religion, nation, or class. Different nations also treat different genders differently. And overall, there's little solidarity among women globally. Some people have argued that gender identity is shaped more by national identity than biology but we'll get back into that later in the class and you can decide that for yourself. The next regulator, race. And racial identity refers to physical features such as skin color. And it holds the same weight as national identity as a regulator. Race can be evaluated from both a biological and or socio-historic perspective. And there is no gene to determine race. Also note that ethnicity is different from race, and ethnicity is defined by a shared heritage like family names, geography, customs, and or language. The final regulator of identity is civilization, which many scholars have argued is the most significant determinant of your identity. Others have argued that national identity is more important in establishing identity than civilization is. When we refer to culture in the context of our course, we're usually speaking in the context of civilizations. All right, there is some helpful vocabulary for you to review and make sure you are on the same page. And this is the end of the lesson.